So I recorded this video, or a video on this topic last night, but the, 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 the zone were like, nah. Anyway, let's try again. Can somebody explain to me how this guy won the fight against this guy? It didn't happen, guys. It didn't happen. Quit crying. How is it that all the Lomasexuals... And I like Lomachenko. I like watching him fight. I think he's the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Okay. But I ain't no Lomasexual. So how is it that all the Lomasexuals complain to this day? And just because you do doesn't mean you are that. Get that straight, right? But to this day complain about Salido low blowing Loma all night. As he did. But they'll say nothing about Derevyanchenko doing the same thing to Golovkin. Is Golovkin, old, aging Golovkin, better than that version of Loma? You better believe he is. He won his fight. That's not throwing shade at Loma. Some people thought he won that fight. I didn't. But I mean, you know, that Loma is long gone, right? Right. Anyway, let's talk about the Charlos. Look, Maybe it's time I remade my Styles Make Fights video. Break it down once again, because it's been a few years since we talked about that. I keep mentioning it, and or various styles and how they match up and what that actually means. And most people have no idea, and it is what it is. When they when when most people talk about styles, they're not even talking about styles, right? But maybe I'll make that video. Refresh everybody's memory. But Classic matchup tomorrow night. Derevyanchenko versus Charlo. Fighter versus puncher. And in that sort of confrontation with everything else being equal, the puncher always wins, right? But the thing with boxing is that almost never, if ever, everything is equal, right? Charlo's taller, perhaps hits harder. Chins are maybe comparable. Derevyanchenko's a bit better inside fighter. Blah, 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 right? Everything else is not equal. It's just one of, one of the things to consider, right? Just like triangle theories are one of many things to consider. But the thing... Oh, shit. i be back. Sorry, guys. Had to step away. Take a food delivery couple hundred pounds of food delivery anyway as we were saying consider this Derevyanchenko is coming off two losses yeah he had that Jack Colquet fight that he won but eh, it didn't look so great struggle right he's coming off two losses fighting for another title he fought for a title lost had a little bounce back fight, fair enough. Beat a pretty highly ranked guy, it is what it is. Then fights Golovkin for another title. Loses, clearly loses. Doesn't matter what the nonsense being spewed out there is by people who don't know what the fuck they're looking at. And then in his next fight, he's fighting Charlo for another title. I mean, can you imagine if Golovkin did some shit like that? Right? I mean, people were criticizing him for fighting Derevyanchenko in the first place. First, he was ducking him. Anyway, we're not getting into that. But this guy's coming off two losses, and they're putting Charlo in there with him. And Charlo's getting praised. For what? you fighting a guy coming off two losses. He, Derevyanchenko, should have dropped back in the ratings and work his way back up. Get some bounce back fights. I mean, you just took a severe career, potentially career altering beating from Golovkin. But but people are sitting there praising Charlo, talking about how, ah, oh, it's a competitive fight. It's a difficult fight. And it is, it should be on paper. But what does that tell you about Charlo? Right? They're talking about Charlo like the number one middleweight in the world. Some people, right? Acting like he's all that and then some, and he could be. But he certainly has improved it. But if you're going to talk about him 
as a champion, middleweight champion, he should be fighting some of the other champions in the division, right? Golovkin, Jacobs. He didn't, he didn't seem to want any of Jacobs. Clearly doesn't want to fight Golovkin. That's obvious. Not yet, anyway. He's fighting, no disrespect to Derevyanchenko, because he is a good fighter, but he's fighting leftovers. Daniel Jacobs and Golovkin leftovers. When they're talking about him like he crushes those guys, right? Or like he competes with them even. A lot of people are saying, and maybe he does. But then shouldn't he be competing with those guys and not fighting their leftovers? They're sending... <laughs> Charlo, who's supposed to be so dope and amazing, such a great fighter. They're giving him not Daniel Jacobs, not Gennady Golovkin, but those two guys leftovers. And it's a 50-50 fight! To call... Charlo a hype job is to give him too much fucking credit. I mean, the guy is a complete and utter hype job. That doesn't mean he sucks. It just means exactly what it means. He's hyped up beyond his abilities. This is the toughest test for him. A guy that's been beaten twice by these guys that Charlo supposedly competes with for a lot of people, destroys. It's just insanity, man. And we're sitting there and praising it and talking. Because it is a good fight, right? It's a, but that's exactly what it is. It's a good fight. Golovkin and Jacob's leftovers is a good fight against Charlo. So what does that say about Charlo? Hype job. Good fighter and a hype job. And those are not mutually exclusive. So don't, no need to get into anyone's feelings. So styles make fights, okay? Puncher versus brawler. Fighter. Slugger versus a fighter. It's something that a lot of people can't even get right because they call brawlers sluggers. No, completely different style. Slugger is a puncher, a guy that commits to majority of his shots, right? Hits with all the power. He might not be a very hard hitter and still be a puncher, actually, because it's a style, right? Hits with all the power that he has, most of his shots, a lot of his shots. Commits to his punches, loads up on his shots, right? Puts... As much power as he can into just about every single shot. That's Charlo. Derevyanchenko is a fighter. He's more about volume, but what makes him a fighter is that he leads and counters. He counters and, and then leads. Or counters and then counters the counter and then counters. He gets into exchanges. That's a fighter. And by... This doesn't make him a fighter by, by the virtue of the fact that he is a fighter and he throws a lot of punches. You don't even have to throw a lot of punches to be a fighter, right? But that's because that's what he does. He has to take something off his shots and he throws a lot of arm punches, slaps. A lot of his punches aren't very good technically because he just throws too many of them, in my humble opinion. Now, he could be a fighter like Lomachenko, who's another fighter, Right? Use movement, look for openings, take your time, be patient, ambush, get out of there like Pacquiao, in and out, in and out, in and out, right? Use a lot of foot movement, feints, do a lot of other stuff to set up your attack, and then once you see an opening, go all in, right? Bang, 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 step off the side, step out. Fighter, right? Many ways to skin a cat, but anyway... Whenever you have a fighter versus a puncher with all things being equal because the fighter is looking to get into exchanges and the puncher, you could have a punching fighter like Rosario in the other um, co-main event. But that's not Derevyanchenko. He's a fighter in style. Uh, so when you're getting into exchanges with the puncher, I mean, yeah, that's going to favor the puncher, right? Because Derevyanchenko can hit Charlo five times and Charlo hits him with one good punch from a puncher. And if he doesn't hurt him or even knock him down, you know, we're comparing five slaps. And I'm being generous to Derevyanchenko. Five little punches against one major one, right? It's the hurt business. He doesn't necessarily have to hurt him that much in order to win that sort of an exchange where Derevyanchenko grazes him with a whole barrage and maybe he lands one clean push jab or something like that, right? Dividing, dividing all this power, energy, calories into five punches in three seconds, let's say, yeah? 
Whereas Charlo is going to take the same amount of calories, same amount of power, whatever that means for him, and translate that into one clean punch, right? Who wins that exchange? The, you, you have a situation where not only you're liable to get knocked out, hurt, whatever, you're getting into a situation where you're diluting your work and the other guy is concentrating on one big punch, clean, effective punching. That guy is likely to win that exchange, if not hurt you, if not knock you out, right? So everything else being equal, punchers beat fighters with everything else being equal. Everything else isn't equal, right? Both guys seem to have solid chins. I would say that Evianchenko's chin is more proven, but, you know, I've seen him hurt. I've seen him down multiple times. I've seen him hurt a lot. I think Charlo's been hurt here and there, but not nearly as much. You know, when you look at punching power, Charlo hits harder, obviously. We talked about that. He's taller, rangier. He looks to be a lot bigger. I would not be surprised if that dude walked around fit, in shape, 12, maybe 15% body fat, 190, 195 pounds. Would not surprise me at all. Big dude. How does he make weight? Well, <laughs> uh, I think we all understand how that works. So, stylistically, Derevianchenko is tailor-made for Charlo, right? So, how do we predict this fight? Well, I mean, it basically, basically comes down to, well, whose chin's going to hold up? Because both guys are very hittable. They both get hit quite a bit. Right? Derevianchenko is probably going to hit him more, but Charlo is going to hit him harder. Whose chin is going to hold up? Basically, that, that's what we're looking at here. It's anybody's guess, right? Derevianchenko is not likely to get a decision. It is what it is. Let's talk about that. And that's really, that's his best chance of winning the fight. Can he stop Charlo? Yeah, he can stop him. But we've never really seen Charlo in much trouble, and he is big. And, you know, he's going to be hitting you back. And he is the harder puncher. So, if everything were on the up and up, okay, I would pick Derevianchenko by decision. Because I don't think he's likely to, it could happen, but I don't think he's likely to knock Charlo out. However, no matter what happens, right? I mean, in this extreme case scenario where that if Yanchenko completely dominates him, which isn't going to happen, not likely to anyway, yeah, he could get a decision in that sort of situation. Fine. But, you know, if he wins seven rounds, he's not getting a decision. Sorry. He just isn't. With everything else being equal and on the upper up and up, I would pick that if Yanchenko by decision. If this fight is in Ukraine... I'm going all in on Derevianchenko by decision, right? What are the other two likely options? Well, Charlo by decision is probably a more likely, if it goes the distance, right? That's the more likely option. And who's more likely to knock who out? Well, Charlo's probably more likely to knock him out. So with everything else being equal, we have a 50-50 fight. And the bookies somehow think that it still is a 50-50 fight, just about slight edge to Charlo. So, you know, the privileged fighter is likely to get it. But I'm not counting Derevianchenko out. And I, I really want to pick him. But I think a lot of people are looking at the Golovkin fight, imagining that something happened that didn't actually happen, hyping up that performance. It was a good performance. He did, had a good account of himself against old Golovkin. Still lost, clearly. Still got hurt multiple times. Maybe he even got his chin cracked to where he can't take him anymore like that. I don't know. We'll see. But people are looking at that fight, and they're seeing a PBC referee, in my opinion, Harvey Doc, all right, on the zone, protecting Derevinchenko for the most part. Yeah, he jumped in that one little moment uh, where Golovkin was hurt, and people said, oh, he's protecting Golovkin. No, he wasn't protecting Golovkin. He probably, he was probably shocked to see Golovkin hurt to the body and didn't see the shot and just assumed it was a low blow, just like those 50 other low blows that Derevianchenko landed up before that body shot that actually did hurt Golovkin and was legal, right? That's probably what Doc was thinking. Like, damn, Golovkin's hurt to the body. It must be a nut shot. 
He was protecting Derevinchenko in that fight, as I showed in my other video. I mean, how do you let a guy blatantly headbutt the champion and not even not even warn him for that? Blatantly jump in with his head and, and smack Golovkin's head back with your head, right? Countless low blows, holding, elbowing, hitting behind the head on purpose, slapping. Barely a warning, right? Harvey Doc is a PBC referee, in my opinion. Well, he was there to help Derevyanchenko look good, so that, in my opinion, so that Charlo, after Charlo beats him, like it's predestined that he will, right? Charlo gets all this credit. This is, it's a measuring stick fight in many ways for Charlo's handlers to be able to see how good he really is and for the public to hype the shit out of this dude. Those people who are biased and don't know what the hell they're looking at. They're going to, if he, you know, Derevinchenko gets in that ring, all of a sudden he can't foul. He can't hit him in the balls. He can't hit him behind the head. He can't headbutt Charlo. That's not going to be allowed. And if, and if for some reason that's allowed, it's only because Charlo is allowed to retaliate twice as, um, twice as hard. So we're not going to have the same Derevinchenko in there. And if we do, then that's green light for Charlo to, to use every dirty trick in the book. But the referee is likely to protect Charlo, obviously. So even if you ignore all the nonsense that Derevyanchenko did against Golovkin and you score that stuff, right? Which you shouldn't. But that's not going to be the same Derevyanchenko. It's not likely that that's going to be the same Derevyanchenko. He's not going to be allowed to do all the same stuff. So that makes him a lot less quote-unquote effective, at least in the eyes of all the noobs. That makes Charlo's job easier than Golovkin's. How about that, right? But it's supposed to be some kind of measuring stick, and it will be. It should be if you're able to consider the circumstances and be honest about what's actually happening, right, in both fights. But people are basically high off that devastating loss, where Derevyanchenko was hurt in just about every round. Yeah, he hurt Golovkin too, but I mean, he was on Bambi legs. He was fighting hurt a lot in that fight, running a lot to recover. Like, he got messed up in that fight big time. Okay? And people are still imagining that he beat Golovkin, so they're rolling with that saying, well triangle theory right they won't say that because it's not cool to believe in triangle theories especially ones that you imagine in your fucking head but that's exactly what they're doing right well he beat Golovkin we always thought Golovkin beat Charlo so Derevyanchenko beats Charlo right that's what they're thinking and triangle theories are useful they're good they make it makes sense to use them it's it's just another tool like styles make fights right triangle theories would work every single time if everything else was equal, right? If both combatants were exactly the same height, exactly the same reach, they fought exactly the same style, they had the same chin, if everything was, were, everything was equal, right? Then triangle theories would work. Well, then every fight would be a draw, but you get the point, right? Everything else being equal. This guy's just better for some reason, or he won for whatever reason. Anyway... So, given all of that, that Derevyanchenko is not likely to be the same fighter for a variety of reasons, that he was against Golovkin, that he was against Daniel Jacobs, to still have that as a 50-50 fight, basically, him going up against a hype job, right? That tells you everything you need to know about Charlo. Not as good as advertised. Is he good enough to beat Derevinchenko? Not legitimately, in my opinion, but there's nothing legitimate about boxing, so he is likely to win. I hope he loses. Because, I'll tell you why, because it would be nice to see Derevinchenko uh, win the title, right? In his third fight, or third attempt at it. Third time's the charm. And I don't respect Charlo because the guy has no dignity, I think he's 
and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, an extremely ignorant man, if not downright evil. And the thing, the reason why I want him to lose is because he's a disgrace, mixing politics with boxing, right? Pushing this Marxist movement that's BLM. That's exactly what it is. Now, we ain't getting into the details of what it is exactly, but uh, suffice it to say, Charlo is a useful idiot for a movement that has admitted many times throughout history that it uses this sometimes legitimately subjugated group that's old Marxism versus this neo-Marxism creating these oppressed groups, right? Like Charlo, a millionaire, oh, so oppressed, um, in order to stoke resentment, aggression, fear, and rebellion, revolution against the powers that be. They use these people they paint as victims in order to overthrow the existing system and then grab hold of power and use that power to terrorize everybody, including the useful idiots that helped them get into power. That's exactly what happened in, let's say, USSR or pre-USSR, right? Ukraine of all places. How befitting. So... Charlo clearly is ignorant and doesn't understand that, but he, I think he also lacks dignity and self-respect because, in my opinion, he is begging for even more privilege, as if he wasn't privileged enough, right? He is begging the judges and the boxing world for that extra privilege, the same way um, Andre Ward was against the communists, right? When Andre Ward is actually the leftist, was the leftist in that, in that equation, he was the beneficiary of a centralized power, government, authority, whatever you want to call it. He was, he was given a handout, basically. Um, anyway, that's, that's essentially what Charlo is doing, in my opinion. As if he wasn't privileged enough, he's saying, Black Lives Matter, right? In, in the lead-up to this fight, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, and then at the same time saying, it ain't about race. Are you insane? This fight is not about race, but Black Lives Matter. Like, is he just an idiot or just an evil, evil person? Anyway, he's mixing boxing with politics, uh, looking to gain a political advantage. That's all that this is, right? Woe is me. Look at me. I'm, I'm such a poor guy, right? I get all these gift decisions all the time. And this guy that's fighting me is trying to, you know, take that away from me. My, you know hard-earned right to, to be up top. Whereas it's Dervianchenko who's actually been putting in work and sacrificing himself more so than Charlo. Charlo's been basically protected, uh, given some shady decisions, taken care of, right? Allowed to cheat, in my opinion. Refusing to do drug testing, so on and so forth, right? So not only is he privileged from the get-go, he's ask asking for more privilege. Right? You're not going to give a decision to this white guy, right? Come on, guys. Look at us, black people. Black lives matter. Right? He's u using everything he can to gain an advantage. Does he really care about black people in general? Did, did he care about the fact that Danny Jacobs was black? What about all these other black guys he disconnected from their senses or tried to? Try to literally kill in the ring. Does he really care about black lives? No, he doesn't give a fuck. Come on, man. He doesn't give a shit about black lives. He's just using this to gain a political advantage, to, to get even more privilege from the system, right? Because he doesn't feel he's privileged enough. He's using, he's mixing boxing and politics. No, boxing is sports and politics. Sports is supposed to be removed from politics. Who, who mixes sports and politics? Well, guys like Hitler. That's what they did, right? Guys like LDBC, basically. Same sort of ideology. This is exactly the same shit. Evil, evil, evil. Okay, sports is about is about the is supposed to be about competition. Whatever evils, whatever shit's happening in the world, none of that is supposed to take place in the ring. It's just supposed to be one man versus an, another man. Okay, it's supposed to be a sport. It's not supposed to be politics, but Charlo wants it to be about politics because that's, that's who these guys are. They're politically privileged um, pussies, bums, and chumps. Hashtag not everybody, right? Let's go Sean Porter. Let's go Pacquiao. But PBC, pussies, bums, and chumps, man. It is what it is.
So I think he's a disgrace. I think he has no respect, not only for the fans, but his fellow man. It doesn't matter the skin color. The guy has no dignity, right? If you don't respect yourself, if you have no dignity, then you're not likely to respect anybody else. Charlotte's just a scrub, people. He's a good fighter, don't get me wrong. He could even be the best. I don't think so, but time will tell. But he doesn't believe he can do it all on his own. Clearly, he doesn't believe that. He's Not only is he privileged from the get-go, he's begging for even more privilege by pushing Black Lives Matter. And when this shit is all said and done, he's not going to do shit for the black community, man. And if he does, it'll be some nominal thing just to, like, promote himself. But he, he's never been... What's he done for the community, right? What has he done, really? Take their money? He charging the community, what, $100, $70 to, to see him fight? To see him fight somebody else's leftovers? Are you kidding me? Using the Latino fighters on the undercard to, to fatten his own pockets? Because them two can't carry a pay-per-view on their own. And it's questionable whether even with these Mexicans and Latino fighters on the undercard, it's even questionable that they can do it like that. But that's what they're trying to do. Live off the backs of these other little guys that are notoriously underpaid compared to everybody else. Especially given the fact that their fights are more exciting, more competitive. They're just better divisions, right? This, this is what it is. This is where we find ourselves, boxing politics, basically. And Charlo is looking to use that to the fullest. Okay, He's not a sportsman. He's not a competitor. He's just a product of this Marxist leftist environment. Looking to cash in on other people's suffering, basically. Keep it real. Just keep it real. And unjustly so. He ain't trying to share the pie, okay? He's not trying to share the spoils. He's trying to grab it all for himself. And given the chance, he would get in the ring with his brother and whoop on him too. Trust me. He would probably do that too. If that was one of his few choices to make good money, they would definitely do that my opinion it is what it is anyway i didn't mean to get too political but yeah i want charlo to lose i want his brother to lose um and i think it's more likely that rosario gets gets the job done because he's huge and he cracks hard but don't be surprised if both brothers get a controversial win because the underdog's chance in this one unfortunately is to knock him out because black lives matter peace out